Hi, I'm Dr. Ruhi Ismail Khan. I'm a breast medical oncologist. I work at the Women's Cancer Center um, at H. Lee Moffitt. The most common kinds of breast cancer are invasive ductal carcinoma, invasive lobular carcinoma, and inflammatory breast cancers. Uh, there are, you know, breast cancer is defined both on pathological differences and clinical differences. Inflammatory breast cancer, which is a clinical definition, often presents like a rash of the breast and is often misdiagnosed as mastitis. There are different types of breast cancer. Most common breast cancers are invasive ductal carcinomas. Eighty percent of breast cancers are invasive ductal. So some breast cancers express estrogen, others don't, and these are things that your oncologist or your surgeon will be able to tell you once your breast cancer is diagnosed and biopsied. Some of the more common signs and symptoms of breast cancer, and remember, none of these have to exist for you to have developed breast cancer, but more common signs and symptoms are redness of the breast, a palpable lesion, or that would, in layman's terms, a mass that you can feel under your fingers that's new. So um, if this happens, this needs to be brought to attention to your primary care physician or your GYN. Other signs and very common signs and symptoms include dimpling of your breast, um, changes in your nipple, redness around the nipple, a new rash on your breast that wasn't there before. Breast cancer has many risk factors. Um, some of the common risk factors are a family history of breast cancer. So if you had a family member who had breast cancer at a young age especially, you may be carrying a breast cancer gene and you should definitely get attention. If other, other cancers that run in your family such as ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, sarcomas, um, this, this, these are associated with the breast cancer gene which are commonly known as BRCA1 and BRCA2. But remember all breast cancers uh, off, do not often present with the BRCA gene. In fact, most women who develop breast cancer do not carry the gene. Other risk factors for breast cancer that have been well defined are um, increased body mass index, uh, can increase your risk for breast cancer, especially for the estrogen receptor positive one. Other, uh, other risk factors as prolonged use of hormonal replacement therapy. So a lot of postmenopausal women are prescribed repla hormone replacement therapy and you've, you've been on this more for more than 10 years or so, there is an associated risk of increased risk of breast cancer. Chronic use of alcohol can increase your risk of breast cancer. But remember, not, it is not only one thing that increases your risk of breast cancer, it's usually a multitude of, other, of many things. Other, other um, lifestyle choices that have been associated with breast cancer, increased risk of breast cancer, is early menarche, which means having your menses very early and late men are, um, and menopause, which means having your menopause really late. So these are some of the increased, uh, and some of the risk factors that are associated with increased risk of breast cancer. The most important uh, screening option for breast cancer is mammography. So mammography should be done in every woman starting at the age of 40. I know there has been a little bit of controversy regarding this, but we strongly advocate and so does the American Cancer Society, that mammograms should start at age 40. However, if you do have an increased risk of breast cancer in your family, you should consider getting a genetics consult and seeing a genetic counselor because you may be in what we consider a high risk person and that means your mammography may start 10 years prior to the, to the youngest person who had breast cancer in your immediate family. Other than mammograms, there are other tools that we use, um, uh, especially in high-risk patients, including MRI and ultrasound. These tools are not considered screening tools, but can be used in the screening uh, realm uh, if we feel that they are applicable to you. Again, that will be better uh, assessed by the physician that you're seeing, but definitely a mammogram is a must for screening. Well, this is my favorite topic. There are many, many uh, new, new drugs coming out for treatment of breast cancer and many uh, new treatments that have come out in the last 10 years that we're now using in the clinic. Um, breast cancer, certain types of breast cancer, cancer, such as HER2 new positive breast cancer, which is also known as EGFR2, um, used to be considered very difficult to treat and in fact had a very high mortality which means a high rate of death in these type of patients. But 
Thankfully, with the advent of new drugs such as Herceptin, which we call as targeted therapies, we can target the tumor without really hurting patients. And this has changed uh, the ability to treat these type of breast cancer patients. Um, and in fact, survival has significantly increased. And uh, patients are living longer, even with metastatic disease, which is very exciting. Just this year, two New England Journal of Medicine articles came out regarding new treatments of breast cancer. One is a drug called pertuzumab, which is what we're very excited about, which is in the family of HER2 new uh, blocking agents, and uh, uh, is working on patients who have become resistant to Herceptin. Okay? We also have other HER2 agents that have previously uh, been approved, such as Tyker. Other uh, and drugs that are coming out for different types of breast cancer include um, Affinitor, which is currently used for other cancers right now, but show a promise in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer that has become resistant to endocrine therapy. There are many new drugs out there that were not available ten, 10 years ago, not just for the treatment of breast cancer, but for making breast cancer treatment easier. So practicing in today's day and age is a, a lot more comforting for patients um, because they have a lot of tools available to us, to us, them, that, we, that didn't, weren't there 10 years ago. I think one thing that I do want to address is um, often certain populations, of, uh, certain populations of patients are afraid of clinical trials. And I think that, you know, the, the future of breast cancer and any uh, cancer the future of cancer uh, is very dependent on the patient's ability to participate in clinical trials. And often there is a misnomer and a, um, a misbelief, I would say, that, that, are, uh, that clinical trials are, are considered subpar to standard of care, which is not, a, which is not really the case. Usually uh, clinical trials today incorporate standard of care and add on, add on another medication in addition to standard of care. So I would just say that you know, for a patient who's considering chemotherapy, I think that clinical trials should be part of their care, and they should ask their physician whether clinical trials are available for them.